Right. So uh, we'll bring the uh, the March Climate Action Plan Committee meeting into order, and we'll start with minutes. Um, so uh, the minutes have been shared prior to the meeting. Um, unless anybody has any changes, we'll put those on file. Good. All right. So uh, we'll get started in a sec. Uh, are you joining us as a guest or? Uh... Yes, for now, yes. yes. Okay. Do you want to introduce yourself? <clears throat> um, sure. Well, so my name is uh, Ray Williams. Um, I moved here about seven months or so ago uh, from California. Um, so there I worked at Pacific Gas and Electric Company and was a climate policy lead for uh, about 10 years and um, worked on uh, a lot of California regulation related to climate and also some some federal regulations as well, such as the Clean Power Plan under the Biden administration. Right back. Mm -hmm. wow. And um, just where else? For? I, I worked in the commercial area, the policy area, and analytics. And I'll, I'll stop there. Okay. Yeah. Well, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. So we meet monthly. Um, and yeah. I'm we're actually just about to introduce two new members of okay, our great. action plan committee as well. Um, so we'll start here in the room. Uh, so I think if, if some of the people have met Cameron before, mm -hmm. uh, but Cameron has now officially been um, appointed to the Climate Action Plan Committee as our at-large candidate, uh, replacing Joe, who had stepped down earlier this year. So welcome, Cameron. Thank you. <laughs> And then uh, online, we have Fred Motor. Did I say that right, Motor? Do you want to unmute so we can hear you, Fred? Uh, yes, your, your pronunciation is good. Great. And Fred is representing the Conservation Commission, which is actually part of the original charter. Um, and we, we, we kind of lost it when Artie went from Conservation Commission over to Planning Board. So we ended up having two people from Planning Board um, Natasha Spot and, and Artie Crocker, but Natasha stepped down um, recently as she's been focusing more on the MAPC uh, rezoning project, and uh, that leaves Artie, and so we finally got someone from Conservation Commission, so welcome, Fred. Thank you very much. Um, do you guys want to say anything about yourselves real, real, real brief? Um, Cameron? Well, I've met most of y'all. I um, am in... It I've moved into a different position now. I'm a environmental health and safety business excellence lead. So working to improve our processes with how we handle our environmental health and safety information at Takeda pharmaceutical company. And I've been in the, um, I have a background in environmental science and uh, my background's in um, uh, air emissions, accounting for and digital systems and also managing health and safety data. And Fred? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm a longtime Needham resident, uh, now retired, uh, and I joined the Conservation Commission just a year ago, um, and my most of my uh, experience that, that I might bring to this is in, uh, in uh, ecologically sound habitat and uh, uh, preservation, uh, but interested in all elements of uh, what's on the charter, I think. Great. Thanks, Fred. Fred, I, I may have Googled you and I may have found out that you also ring the bells Friday. Is that correct? Uh, indeed. Can you tell yes, us a little sir. bit about that? Certainly. Um, the I'm a member of the Congregational Church of Needham. And uh, some time ago, the environmental ministry team in that church began a vigil for the 11th hour. Uh, and so on the 11th day of each month at 11 a.m., uh, they uh, ring, we ring the bells uh, to sort of remind everyone that uh, this is something that needs our attention. 
Great. Well, thanks for doing that, raising that awareness, Fred, and welcome. Um, why don't we just do a quick round of introductions for the for the rest of the team, and I'll start with Rachel on online. If you could just uh, introduce yourself to the new members. Yeah, it's great to have you all. Nice to meet you. Um, I'm not feeling so well today, so I'm <laughs> keeping my germs at home. Um, I've been on the committee since its inception, and it's great to to have some new energy as well. And I've lived in Needham um, 13 years, I think. I have uh, two boys, and they're in, in the schools here in, in town. Great. Thanks, Rachel. Nick? Um, I'm Nick Hill. I'm the Vice Chair of the CAPC, I'm also uh, lived in Needham for 20 years, um, and I'm a member of the Green Needham Steering Committee. I'm Paul Delvica, and I've been a member of the committee for the last three years, lived in Needham for five years, and uh, glad to have you. Uh, I'm Cecilia Simtuk. I'm the Assistant Director of Finance for the Town of Needham. I'm not officially a committee member. I'm here as town uh, support. And bring us the money. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Get it. I'm Kevin Keene, uh, Vice Chair of the Needham Select Board. Um, I've been on this committee since day one. It's great. It's so welcome. It's very happy to have us. Gabby. Hi, I'm uh, Gabby Queenan. I'm our sustainability manager, um, and that is a, a new position. So I've, I've been here for about three months. Great. And Catherine? And then I'm um, Catherine Copley. I and I'm work actually for the building design and construction department, and I'm uh, doing the minutes for this committee. Great. And for those of you who have not met Peter O'Neill, uh, I need an observer in the background. He's one of our guests today. And I'm Stephen Frail. Uh, now I think I've met everybody, and I, I've been working with the Climate Action Bank Committee since its inception, previously with Green Needham. Um, Needham resident, 20 years, so 20 plus years. All right. Um, so let's get with a few things to get through today. Um, one of our, this is the first time we're doing this, but an update from our sustainability manager. Um, so I'll turn the floor over to you, Gabby. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so I, I thought it might be helpful just to share a couple updates about some of the um, work that we've been doing um, the last couple months. Uh, this is my first time doing one of these updates for the group, so I imagine it will look different next time, but this is what I've got for now. Um, so uh, we've put together a sustainability web page now. Um, so there's information on there for a slew of topics. I imagine that'll be a resource that continues to grow. Um, we'll be adding a specialized opt-in. Yeah. So sorry. Do, do you want to share your screen or do you just read to it? Um, That's you. I'm you just going to read. All right, go for it. Because I, I think this might be a little bit long. Fair enough. Um, we'll be adding a specialized opt-in code page. I've been working with um, folks in the building department about kind of what information to put on there for residents and businesses who are um, might have questions about uh, what that is going to look like when implementation starts July 1. Um, and also working with um, our building staff on trying to put together an event for building inspectors and commissioners um, and other towns that are also implementing the specialized opt-in code so we can do some peer sharing, um, best practices uh, with other communities that are already implementing the code. Um, I am uh, now a member of the Local Infrastructure Hub Federal Infrastructure Grant Application Boot Camp, um, which is a very interesting um, resource for communities that are interested in applying for some of these federal infrastructure grants that are coming out. Um, so I'm enrolled in the IRA Elective Pay, Direct Pay, Clean Energy Tax Credits Bootcamp. Um, so I've been part of that for the last couple of weeks and the goal of that is to kind of support the town's eventual um, successful registration for the program. Um, so actually we're meeting with the IRS on Friday to hopefully kind of get the final pieces together so that we can do the pre-registration for that. Um, we are working with the building maintenance team right now on developing a proposal for the upcoming spring round of the Green Communities Competitive Grant Program. Um, we'll be um, looking at funding, hopefully the replacement of some of our gas water heaters with air source water heaters um, and lighting upgrades as well. Um, we've been working with AECOM to do some of the walkthroughs for that. So we're waiting on information from them and then we'll put in the application um, for this May. 
Um, we submitted a congressional earmark request to Congressman Auchincloss's office for um, stormwater and green infrastructure funding um, to address um, some of the flooding issues we've had in town, and that will hopefully be supporting some of our NIFD support projects. Um, so that's an ongoing effort. Um, the application for Warren and Markey's office just came out today as well. So we'll start that earmark request process as well. We're interviewing for summer interns right now, um, and that's through a partnership with the University of Michigan Ford School of Public Policy, and they've um, offered to fund the intern for the summer. Um, so we've got a couple of great candidates. We're hoping that they'll help us with some of the green communities data collection that we need for our annual reporting um, and also help support the development of some of our outreach with residences and businesses um, to support weatherization and electrification. Um, I'm working with the school staff on evaluating some grant funding options for hopefully securing an electric bus and EV charging infrastructure. The level three charging infrastructure grants are pretty limited, but we're exploring some, some options for that. Um, we are applying for um, mass EVIP for an EV charging station for the Bailey building. Um, we'll be getting an electric van over there for the building maintenance staff very soon. Um, so it'll be an exciting addition to our fleet. Um, we're supporting coordination of mass power choice and DPU um, for our municipal electricity aggregation filing. Um, as some of you know, because you testified at the hearing earlier this month, um, we did have our public hearing, which is an important milestone. Um, so that will be continuing as we, I guess now really kind of are waiting for the response um, from DPU on that. And yes, mm -hmm. we don't we don't have any numbers. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it, was a, um, it was a good omen though that the attorney general's yes. office weighed in at the start. And yeah. Sort of said, yeah. yeah. Keeping an eye on it at the very least. So yeah. every little every little bit counts with DPU. Um, those are kind of the highlights. There's some other things, but um, I don't want to take up all of our time. It has a very full agenda. So one question. What sure. have, is there are there any plans for the tree summit? Mm. Or is that sort yeah. of it what had was scrubbed, we want to redo it and we Okay. Okay. We didn't like the, who the lineup was going to be, okay. and then we don't know exactly how to do it, but it's coming. No, because I, I had someone from Green Needham eagerly, and it's all what's happening. What's happening? Oh, okay. all right. So, yeah, we. I'm eager to move on. Great. So it won't be lots of time. So, so one thing that you somewhat glossed over, um, and I'm going to share it is some of the updates you've been doing to the website. And I don't know how many of us have been, I'm sure that you've seen it, but I don't know, has anybody else been on the website lately? Uh, there's a whole new set of, of resources that have been added here. Um, and I assume, Gabby, you've been doing a lot of this or maybe working with others who are also adding to it. Yeah, every so often I'll get an email from a resident with some ideas, which has been great. Um, so if you have ideas, please, please send them my way. There's so many different things we could put on there. Yeah, so uh, that was great. That's exciting. Exciting that, um, that we, you know, I think last time I looked, we had three little <laughs> sub menu yeah. items. So it's it's definitely fleshing out. And you were talking about the Newton Power Choice, um, which is we have a web page up there for that now as well. So if anybody's ever asking what's going on with our municipal aggregation, we have information here um, as well as um, in other parts of the website. So great. Yeah. It's like we went from zero to this. And if I can mention one other great thing Gabby's been doing. No, well, she's been uh, attending the Chamber of Commerce um, Environment Committee. So I got to see her this morning, yeah. um, which is really exciting because talking, for example, about other towns with energy coaches and can we get, you know, you know, we have fun, but networking among the various towns, Needham, uh, Newton, Wellesley, and Watertown. So, Well, you were not the only person who saw Gabby on my today. Uh, we're also doing <laughs> the volunteer. She's from in San Diego. <laughs> call, volunteer heat pump coaching uh, uh, program. So it's a five-week, one-and-a-half-hour-a-week 
um, program so that we'll become certified EPROM coaches um, at the end of this process. So. Our shared interests. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So um, good. Uh, so the you know we'll talk a little bit more about um, obviously we have a few more uh, months of this before we transition to the climate action plan committee. But I think one of the things that we all just want to con keep communicating communicating to you is that however you need support, we'll figure out how to do it. I so appreciate that. If you ever feel like you're hey, there's threads I want to pull, but I can't pull. Um, you can always pitch it over here and say, do you guys mind pushing this forward while I'm focusing on these higher priority items? Thank you. Yeah. I, I really appreciate that. And we'll definitely be picking you all up on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Um, so I think that actually is a pretty good transition into the next topic. And I'll stop sharing so you can share the, the new um, charter. So um, this might be breaking news for everybody, but if you remember, it was just about two years ago that our committee first met. Um, and when we were chartered, we were chartered for two years. And our charter was to come up with the climate action plan, the first climate action roadmap for, for NEA. Um, we'll be doing talking a little bit more about that later in the meeting. Um, but the select board met and voted earlier um, this month, I think it was, on what happens after our charter expires. And they voted to charter a new committee called the Climate Action Committee. Uh, and this new Climate Action Committee will replace this committee. So this committee will wind down, This the new one will wind up, spool up. Um, the new committee is a permanent committee. Um, so where we were not a permanent committee, that this the new one is. Um, and there'll be a process for selecting members for this new committee. Um, so why don't we go scroll down a little bit on what the membership will be looking like. So there's 11 voting members, so that's larger than the current committee. Um, and there's more um, other permanent boards and committees that have either a member or a designee. So the select board will have a single member or designee. Planning board, the same. Conservation Committee, the same. Um, there's a Mobility Planning and Coordination Committee. Um, it will be added to this. And if those of you who've worked on the Climate Action Plan, you know that transportation is a big section, section. So it's great to have somebody from this, this committee now um, sitting as a permanent seat. There's the Permanent Public Building Committee. Buildings being another roughly third of our carbon footprint, um, it's great that we have somebody who will be permanently on the committee from that, that group. Um, finance committee um, will have a permanent representative as well, which is very important because every action that eventually gets recommended um, will be reviewed by the finance committee. Some of them will have financial impact on the town, and we want to make sure that we are um, you know we have all our ducks in a row before those things we go go before finance committee or town meeting. Um, school committee. Um, school committee has actually been pretty much out in front on climate on a lot of issues for, for many years. Michael Grice, who's, who's with uh, Green Needham, has been on the school committee for many years. And so they've, they've done things like reducing waste in, in the school system. Um, they've been pushing for electric buses for a long time. They're one of the driving forces between behind the, uh, the solar bylaw that we are going to be voting on at town meeting this spring because they want canopies over the, the parking lots and the parking lots are not zoned for solar canopies. We don't have any language in our zones that are zoning that would allow for that. So they've been pushing that. So it's good um, that we'll have a member of the school committee here too. They're also, they have the most building space in town. Um, they have a, well, not a huge fleet of vehicles, but they have a fleet of vehicles. Yeah. Um, so that's good. Um, member of Green Needham. So this is actually something that I believe is required in order for the town to comply with a new, um, the climate, climate leaders community. Yeah, climate leader community designation. Yeah, yeah so that's that's replacing green communities. Uh, so, so green communities will still be there, but this will be like the 2.0, so you can actually stack on top of green oh, communities. Okay, yeah. all right, so I didn't yeah. realize it was going to stack on top. Yeah. What is it environment? The climate climate leader communities designation, and they are encouraging people to have a um, 
community-based organization, uh, particularly an environmental group on their local committee. That's one of the things they said that look favorably at. So, and this is another grant program that only people who get this designation will be able to buy right. for grants. Uh, and and the, the sense that I'm getting is the state is really shifting away from efficiency towards carbon reduction. And if you think of green communities, that was like the big, how do we use less? Right. So, you know, switching to LED light, LED light bulbs and more efficient vehicles. The climate leaders program is more about how do we get carbon out of the system completely? Because green communities won't do solar, for example. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So a uh, very important uh, program for us to qualify for. So the green member of Green Movement helps us with that. Um, youth member. So this is something that I believe the Human Rights Commission has had a lot of success with. Um, yeah. Uh, Needham Youth and Family Services has two. Needham Youth and Family. Okay. So and they were voting members. Is it is a youth under it was under eighteen? Somebody was asking or yeah. under twenty one. Okay. Yeah. Eighteen and under or under eighteen. Under eighteen. Eighteen. Well, you got to get a high school at this point. Okay. Senior. Yeah. So they might be eighteen. Yeah. So yeah. A high school. It's... We're gonna stop being that precise. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is a it is a three year term, and so the hope is that you have continuity, and so you're probably gonna want to recruit people earlier in high school so that they don't disappear halfway through their right. their wow. Um, their tenure. Uh, but I think that was a really important addition to this, this committee. And then we'll have two resident at large um, representatives as well. So Kevin, your, do you want to talk about the, your process for, for selecting members here? So it turns out I get to pick up. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I don't. But it's um, vice chair picks uh, interviews for the select board, all these people. Uh, and the committee, other committees will send a designee. I don't check those. Right. But the at large, the youth member, um, the designee, the site for that, check on that. Okay. Um, and that role I'm in until April 9th. April 9th. Yeah. And then. So that's very yeah. soon. Yeah. Um, so I think what one thing we'd like to ask every member, current member of this Climate Action Plan Committee, um, and that includes. Brett and Cameron, who are a member of this committee, um, and it in includes people who are not on the committee. <laughs> if you are interested to reach out to, uh, I think it's Miles, or is there right. a form? There's an actual there form, is a form. There's a form, yeah. Do you happen to know where that form is? Yes, go to the um, committees, all committees, volunteer. Let me see if I can. And is there a deadline? Um, as soon as possible. Okay. Is it committee volunteer interest? Yeah. Um, if you hang on, I'll just I'll just share that real quick. Then we'll come back to you. Yeah. Okay, stop sharing. Yeah. Yeah, just for a second. So this is neon.mass.gov forms dot aspx. Sorry. Committee volunteer interest. You'll submit um, the information in here. The one question, oh, so you have to type in, it's not a drop down. So you would be putting in climate action committee here. Um, you could also email Kevin directly and say, please consider me for one of those positions. Um, so, you know, just, you know, full disclosure, there's only two at large in, um, positions in the new committee um, because so many of those seats are, 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 are designated. now. It does allow other boards and committees to delegate. So they don't actually have to have, for example, um, the select board. Right. Kevin could say, I don't want to actually sit on the committee, and none of the board members want to sit on the committee. We will pick X person to represent the select board seat. Uh, and that is allowed. So, uh, so if you're interested, um, go through the form, submit it, or you can reach out to Kevin. <laughs> Um, you've met Cameron there, yeah? Right? And you know Fred Milder. Hi, Fred. Yeah. <laughs> Marianne Cooley has just joined us, Fred. And this is Ray, right? Yes. Ray, uh, who's uh, you're joining us as a concerned citizen, I guess. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and former energy expert uh, in California. Okay, great. So. so so our charter ends in June. June, okay. 
30th. June 30th. Yeah. And so the new the new charter starts July 1st. Um, and I think Kevin, we were talking earlier this week. The idea was to try to get the new committee formed, you know, the people chosen and, and everybody knows who who's who um, as soon as possible so that come July 1st, right, they're ready to, to meet. Otherwise, not... the answer is actually you continue until until somebody gets reappointed. So we will actually say when we're ready, but it would be good to get it worked. We'll get for we'll, sure. Right. Have the movement mobility too, right? Yeah. 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 Um, we wouldn't just stop all so work. So no one's going to just stop. That's, that's the goal. Right. We're not stopping all work. So Got yeah. So. And no one's going to pay. But we don't have a contract that you can do. A contract. <laughs> <laughs> we're keeping the same pay. Good. We'll keep the same thing. No, the whole benefits yeah. will stay the same. All right. Um, so, Gabby, do you want to go back to the charter real briefly? Yeah. I'll stop sharing. I don't have a contract after. You're right. <laughs> Did you want to look yeah. at the composition again? Or the... No, no, I think we finished the composition. Why don't we give everybody a chance to, to read? The purpose and charge. Have a chance to read through. Any questions about it? It's pretty straightforward. Uh, where, where's the climate action go about for mm -hmm. someone to just? We're going to get to that. Just that's our next agenda. <laughs> <laughs> our very next <laughs> agenda. <laughs> and we're talking about what we'll be doing. So, uh, so yeah. So as you can see, we're no longer. It's a lot of the same things we've been doing. We're not longer developing the roadmap, but we'll be keeping it fresh, updating it, providing the same um, advice and recommendations. Um, and that's what we are, right? Um, in addition to supporting the select board and then Gabby, um, you know, if there's any support needed for ongoing efforts of the town um, that would involve climate action, I'm sure those the things would be um, referred here. So back here, there. All right. Um, so that brings us to the climate action roadmap. My screen is frozen, but oh, there we go. Okay. Let me share. So while you're bringing that up, I'll give everybody an update. So um, if you remember back in uh, January, we as a committee reviewed the climate action roadmap and provided some feedback. I aggregated that feedback in addition um, to just some copy editing and sent that off to the consultant KLA. Um, we've worked with KLA and they have now, um, through uh, an extended contract, completed their work. So they've submitted uh, just in the past week, this draft of the system, well, the final draft of our first climate action roadmap. Uh, I believe we caught everything. I'm hoping that even with as many eagle eyes that are out there, that you're not going to find something that you didn't already see. <laughs> but I know, having been in publishing myself, it does not matter how many times you go over something, something <laughs> got missed. Um, but I want to remind everybody, this is a living document. Um, you know, if there are any things that are egregious, we have the files we can fix. Um, but it will be something that um, lives in public, and we will uh, continue to update it as a town. The Climate Action Committee, in addition to Gabby, will be working on that on a regular basis. So, um, do you want to spool through it? Just yeah, you know, just real quick. We just kind of we we did update everybody's um, acknowledgments page with hopefully the correct affiliation and spelling of their names. 
this was probably the most heavily edited page. I think almost every single name had something that we needed to do for it. So um, fingers crossed that we got everybody listed and we have no misspellings and no misattributions. Um, but if somebody does come out and say, hey, you missed me or you misspelled my name, um, we can try to figure out a way to update it. Uh, I think we got put a new photo in here. Yeah. And this is unchanged. There might have been like a copy editor too. This was unchanged. Uh, this was unchanged. Didn't do anything here. Um, they did. Oh, they added a photo of, of the uh, Sunita Williams solar array here. This was mostly unchanged. I think there might've been some minor tweaks on this page. Here's where we started to get into more heavily um, editing. Uh, the, the paragraph at the bottom we updated because it, some of the things we said were gonna happen had already happened. So we, we changed that. This is also where we introduced the, um, the uh, social cost of carbon concept. Uh, which had not been introduced previously. So we, we did spell out what our assumptions were because that's important in some of the calculations that are made later. Uh, there were some copy edits here. Uh, these had a few minor things. Uh, we tweaked some of the statistics. We did put in the 220 homes and businesses that were impacted by the August 8, 2023 uh, rain event. Um, so that was a, a, a new thing that had been added. Um, other than that, minor tweaks on this page. This chart was pretty much redone. Um, we did a lot of changes on this to make it a little bit easier to, to digest and consistent in terms of the numbers. Um, natural gas leaks, for example, was not on this before. So we did get those in. That, that's a significant source of carbon emissions. And the numbers tie up, which is... That's important. Yeah, is there anything in, in the industrial sector in Needham? We have very small industrial, uh, but commercial municipal buildings, 25% um, of our carbon yeah. comes from those, um, those commercial municipal buildings. And then residential homes, another 34%. And municipal is what, like? Tiny. 3%. I was going to say three or four, yeah. yeah. Not buildings, though. That was, that's okay. all of municipal is about 3%. What's amazing is the gas leaks dwarf the yeah, yeah. municipal yeah. building for yeah. municipal use. Honestly, that's, that's a very good point. It's probably more important for us to get our hand around the handle around the gas leaks than a lot of things. Um, and then transportation is about 30, 33%. All right, so we'll go. This chart was heavily revised as well, simplified. Um, it is still a downward shaping wedge, but that's mm -hmm. kind of the standard in this this area, these types of documents. Uh, but I think this is a lot cleaner, easier for us. To, and we took the icons, the confusing icons out of here. And then we added the gas leaks in here because that was another place where it was missing. But otherwise, remove the icons. Mm -hmm. Then we just kind of maybe move slowly through the, uh, we don't need to stop on the actions that come up next. Yeah. We tried to align all those icons between what's in progress, what's high priority, and what's done. I think this really, it struck me looking through this at how much we've gotten started. Yes. Yeah. And yes. really adding those those icons. Yeah, it makes, really, it makes it look less daunting that we said yeah. it's already in progress or it's completed. And I think we added the high priority in this version. Right. <clears throat> So this, um, there were a lot of copy edits throughout this that, that I um, compiled from everybody's edits. We call it the specialized energy code in this, not the opt-in. I know. I, and I thought of you when I read that. I know, it was no longer opt-in because <laughs> we bought it in. Right. <laughs> Semantics. Uh, and then there's some minor minor tweaks on most of these pages. We did add a few new metrics, uh, like for example, the percentage of households enrolled in the um, municipal aggregation program. I think we added that one. And there, the next one under governments, we added one around the. No, it wasn't this one. When there was uh, 
And we just did the um, natural gas and electric. Natural gas and electric. And the, um, what was oil. the 411, the, 411, the uh, is that the first one? Um, Where is the Could have sworn it was in here. All right, I'm getting dizzy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> back and forth at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Net zero buildings. A lot of discussion, by the way, on gas versus oil. Um, the data is, this was the one I was thinking about. Oh. Uh, percentage of need and residents signed up for the RAVE 911 mobile alerts, um, given um, our expectation that there'll be more events. events. Yeah. So that will be something that we'll be tracking. And then there was uh, from the mobility committee, uh, actually the, the, the pedestrian cycling component of that um, percentage of residents within a quarter mile of a high comfort bicycle network was another one that they suggested. Mm. So and that's high, that. High, what rate? High comfort. Comfort, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In other words, like you're not riding next to trucks. In yeah. a share row. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or um, a neighborhood, like a, a quiet neighborhood, like where we live on Power Street, that's mm -hmm. that's considered a high comfort area. Yeah. So are you cycling down Melrose to Great Plain? Is Great Plain considered high comfort or not? Mm -hmm. And part of the, the semantics is also, do we have a plan? Do we have a network plan? Or not, and they were saying we're going to develop that, and then we're going to make sure it reaches within a quarter mile of, of all homes in the next thirty years. So that's that's the uh, roadmap. Um, I think what I was hoping we could talk a little briefly about is what are the next steps in terms of um, socializing this. I assume the first step would be to take this finished document to the select board, board. and then and then you would vote on what what to do next with it. So we'll have to get it on an agenda. Add it to the list. It's going on the list. <laughs> so we probably leave it there. Yeah. For now. Uh, in the meantime, uh, should we or should we not post this on the town website? Yeah. I think we can go ahead and post okay. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just want that. Just, I'm sorry to stop you. Yeah. Uh, I saw at the beginning you had wildfires, floods, and so forth. And mm -hmm. that suggests sort of an adaptation plan. And I saw that you had resilience in there. So is, is the resilience essentially the adaptation plan? Or do you have something like that for the town? So we have within the actions, and, and I'd be happy to walk you through this. Yeah. Um, you don't have to do it right now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, th there's a, a number of actions that deal with that adaptation. So things like, you know, how we need to be thinking about cooling centers and the like. Right, um, right. There's there's uh, adaptation around flooding, right. for example, rainstorms, rain events. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not a separate plan, but it's kind of woven it's through. The, okay. Yeah. Good question. All right. Um, so that brings us to our last item of the day. And this is the uh, solar bylaw. Um, and you have that to share as well, right? Yeah. Now, show of hands, how many people have read our solar bylaw? That was the one thing I did in the little public reading. Yeah, the parts? Yeah, okay. I read both. You read both the old and the new? The red line in and the. Oh, good. I've forgotten it, but I read it. Um, so, this is this is the article. We're not sure where it's going to be voted on in town meeting. It's, it says Article One. I don't think it is actually Article One. No, it's not Article One. No, it's not Article One. Yeah, it's not Article <laughs> One. Um, so uh, the primary. Um, you can keep going. Yeah. We have an article number though. It's okay. not Article One. So the primary. Um, ask of the planning board when we referred this this to them was to institute solar uh, bylaw that would allow us to define and and and, um, and permit primarily commercial rooftop solar arrays and solar parking canopies those are the two two major areas that were missing uh, there were also some definitions that were missing in our uh, in our existing bylaw, 
the existing solar bylaw was really written for the RTS solar array, uh, since that's large large scale ground mounted solar array over at the um, the RTS. And so there's definitions in there of what a large ground mounted solar array is, but there's nothing else about rooftops or canopies. Uh, so there's a lot of definitions in this the solar bylaw that have been added. Small, medium ground based canopies, um, roof mounted, roof canopy mounted, um, et cetera. So they 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 actually put a lot of effort into trying to come up with a bunch of different definitions. Uh, the other thing that was um, a, a, a miss on the old bylaw was that solar was lumped in with canopy uh, with um, mechanicals when they looked at rooftop coverage. And so you would see in any of districts where there's commercial buildings, they would say you're restricted to 25% rooftop coverage for all mechanicals, including HVAC, solar, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Doesn't make much sense because you can't, once you get past your mechanicals, there's really no room for the solar at that point. Um, and so and that- Also, as I recall, a height restriction that was an issue for the height of the yeah. panels on the roof. That's also correct. So there yeah. was a height restriction and you couldn't put the solar arrays above the mechanicals mm -hmm. if your building was already at the limit mm -hmm. for, that, for that zone. So they put a lot of thought into this and they have actually come up with a, a number of, of, I thought, um, useful additions to it. Um, I didn't know if you guys want to comment on this now. I think they just had a public comment on Tuesday um, of this week. Um, so their public meeting on solar arrays was this Tuesday. Oh, it's already happened. It has already happened. Um, if you do have additional changes, thoughts, comments, I think you can still email the planning board on this. Does that sound right to you? That sounds right, but they probably need it ASAP. ASAP, right. Yeah. So I guess I just wanted to open this up. Is there anything that anybody has any qualms about having looked at the solar bylaw? Uh, Artie. Hey, Artie. Hey, gang. Yeah, sorry I wasn't able to be there. I'm, I'm on I'm on grandkid babysitting duty right now. Sorry about that. Plus an hour show at the school. In any case, right. yeah, we voted. Yeah, on Tuesday, we voted uh, okay. to send the out to this bylaw. We're sending it to the select board for that inclusion in the warrant article. So we've already voted on this. It doesn't mean there can't be some change at uh, town meeting, but, um, but we've already voted on it and passed it through. Um, so there's not as at this point there's not much else we're going to do with it as far as an i know i suppose the select board will have some have some comments i don't know if there's going to be any edits besides some grammatical thing on it which is even possible before it hits town meeting at this point okay. um but we've put a lot of thought into it obviously we're always going to welcome any comments at town meeting great i have one question i'm that's going all, that's, that's what else to do besides Hang on a sec, Artie. Nick, Nick has a question. Yeah, I seem to recall there was something about if a ground-mounted system were in the front yard, it would require additional uh, a special, special. special. And, and, and we screening. Had, we had talked about that a couple of meetings ago. Would that run afoul of the state law? And I guess I noticed that was still in the... Um... I think the conclusion was it doesn't run afoul of the state law okay. um, because we permitted so many other options that that one special permit didn't didn't constitute a substantive prohibition. Okay, and, and from a practical standpoint, I doubt we'd be seeing many front yard solar installations. Personally, I would hope, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, the only, the only the only place I can even imagine, I, the only place I can even imagine is if maybe SRB was someone with an incredibly large yard, where they have a massive, you know, fairly large, expansive front yard, and that's the only thing that's that's the only logical location. Um, again, as Miriam said, as a lot of us think, Needham is not a ground mount type type community, so I don't envision any. I don't envision that being a, a, a being prohibitive to us to anyone accomplishing their goal. And if it is, we have the 
special permit process to go through. Yeah, you still have a permit process, so it's not forbidden. Um, so in your example, if somebody had a very large front yard and that was the only place to put it, um, you know, probably they may not even need the screening because they've got a very large front yard, uh, but they would go through the special yeah. permit process. Okay. Yeah, so, exactly. um, yeah. yeah, and then there was the, also the discussion about the, the side and backyards um, and the setbacks, the setbacks, but the setbacks uh, are if within the accessory structure limit, which is five feet from side and back, right. um, six foot screening is required. But if it's 10 feet beyond the lot lines, no screening. So um, if somebody wants to put it in their backyard, they can put it in the backyard. And if it's 10 feet from their side and then back lots, they're fine. As long as they don't exceed the coverage, yeah. lot coverage, which is another restriction on it. Uh, the other thing that they did put in is parking canopy. Uh, I believe already, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you can do a uh, parking canopy in a residential home. Yes, yes, yes. Parking cans are allowed. Again, we have, you know, still the accessory structure set back, although technically driveways can be right up to the lot line, I believe, but the power canopy is the accessory structure. Uh, again, I just don't envision bodily going on. What I can envision is someone doing some type of pergola and then putting solar on the pergola or something like that. That, right. that I can really do that in right? situations. Yeah, and that's treated differently than the ground based. Uh, well, I, yeah, that is treated differently because that can be treated, that can be treated as it, it's ancillary to the primary purpose or something like that. So, yeah, I, I believe just, that's the way I, I don't I don't see a lot of I don't see a lot of pushback related to that. Yeah. Hey, Yardy, how was the public comment? Any anything? Yardy. Uh, Artie, can you hear us? I, I, I can hear you. Can you hear me? No, oh, now we can. Yeah, we can. Hello. So the question Hello. was public comment. Was there, uh, was there a lot of public comment? I don't know what just happened. But what, what's up? Uh, public comment. Was Hello? there a lot of public comment on the solar bylaw on Tuesday? Uh, um, zero. Okay. Okay. Absolutely no public comment whatsoever. Yeah, absolutely All right. right. Yeah. One more. Yeah. It's not a hot button issue. <laughs> so, or people are ready to start. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's, yeah. I think it's pretty clean. Yeah. So there was actually quite a bit of um, meetings that, that the planning board went through. So, um, so this is where we ended up. I think it's a, it's a very strong bylaw. I'm very happy with it, and thank the planning board, Artie, um, you, Natasha, and everybody. All right. It's, it's article number twenty. Twenty. Mm -hmm. In case you have a need to know. Are you guys? Yeah, you're. Okay, just <laughs> All right. Well, actually, that brings that. That's our last topic of the day. Um, so, unless anybody has. Yeah, any... can I just ask, just for yeah. this group, what would have them together? I know you've been doing some work on an EV policy. Are there any sort of high level comments you can make about that? I know there's some questions still. But yeah. Open, but... yeah, I was going to say, uh, we have started looking at an EV first policy, and I know I'm going to chat with folks tomorrow more about that. Um, that is one of the requirements for the climate leader communities designation. Um, it's something that I think there are great models already in other communities. Um, and I think there are ways that we can craft it to work with the way that we evaluate our fleet right now. Um, so it's it's something I I don't have any simple language for us yet or anything like that, but there's active conversations happening right now about that. So I just wanted you to know that. Right. Yeah. We're actually two people right. well, yes. I knew Gabby was coming. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think it's good for the group to know that that. It, it, it this group had said we'd like to see us participate in the climate leader program and um the piece that we didn't have is this ev first policy that's a sticking point so it is definitely something we needed to understand and i think that's the last brick i think so that's 
it's that and then the um, roadmap, uh, we, need, we need a decarb roadmap for all of our municipal buildings. Mm -hmm. um, and so actually the EV policy is a, is in part kind of driving some of the conversations we're having about the roadmap because there is a grant out right now from the state for roadmap assistance. But in order to um, apply for the grant, you need to include um, a letter um, from your uh, town manager or mayor saying that uh, if you receive the assistance within a year of receiving the assistance, you will meet the rest of the climate leader requirements, which includes the EV policy. So we're really looking at them both at the same time because of that. That makes sense. Yeah. Because the other one is the roadmap, roadmap for new yeah. building. Yeah. So the grant for that is out right now. And it's due soon. It is due. Literally, soon. I'm going to say like within two weeks or something. Right? It's at April 12th. Yeah. So very soon. It's a it's a very straightforward application as state um, grants go, but um, it does have that component to it, which is why we're starting these conversations about um, the EV policy as well. Okay. So I just want everybody to know that that is a current focus and you know as as you commented we've we've made a lot of progress i think really thanks to this committee highlighting what could be done we really tried to focus on things that didn't necessarily require a lot of dollars but that needed some focus and um and i think that's a great place to start so good uh, any other so it's like science-based targets initiatives and like climate disclosure programs. Do we have any sort of plans to do any sort of public disclosures? Like Birdo or I think I don't know if CDP necessarily applies to like municipalities. And that's kind of a question I had for you. Is, you know, are there any sort of disclosures that we should be looking into? I mean, I thought like we were talking about that this morning at the chamber a little bit. Um I think it's it's something we should start to talk about. I think that towns are starting to tread in that direction. And I think, I know there were some rumblings from the state originally that there were going to be requirements for disclosures on the commercial side. I haven't seen that follow through yet, but doesn't mean that it, it won't be coming. Um, I don't so, think it's imminent. Doesn't yeah, it's imminent. imminent. I mean, there, do you explain disclosures? So a lot of companies have been opting in to do like uh, climate, uh, the climate disclosure program and it's kind of the gold standard. If your company opts in to do these things, then you know you have a good stamp of approval. It's also good for financial for um, investors. So the SEC was pushing towards people doing these types of disclosures that have their scope one, scope two, scope three emissions reported. In a certain way, but that's become under fire. So there have been lawsuits like by Exxon and Big Oil saying the SEC can't attach these requirements to your actual financial information. So that's been under fire. So it was becoming imminent, but at the same time, there's been a lot of pushback. So people are saying you need to really account for your scope three emissions while everybody's scrambling to do that. You can't really. Long story short, it's the gold standard. If you want to be really transparent about what your emissions are, then you should probably start teeing yourself up. And usually the way to do that is by following the science-based targets mm -hmm. and making sure that what we have within our roadmap is aligned with those metrics. And so when, as we outline our climate action committee, that should be our baseline. Are we on track within those five years to meet those targets? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm all for setting us up so that, because I, I do think that's the reality in the future, those requirements will be mandatory. So I'm, I'm all for starting to tee us up so we're ready for that. I know we heard a little bit this morning from Wellesley, who's put together um, a building working group, um, which is like all voluntary, and they brought some folks to the table just to kind of talk about what they were um emissions look like right now and an opportunity to share like software ideas and um ideas for how to report but again it's like it's not okay this, this, it is, this, exactly. this is different it's the gold <laughs> standard and yeah. yeah and we compare ourselves a lot to wellesley and those communities mm -hmm. is that just because there's like maybe a little bit more advanced as opposed to maybe like the Cambridges of the world where they had this over. Yeah, they're similar, similar sized neighbors and they are, gotcha. they have been on the path a little bit longer than we have been. Mm -hmm. I have to say, I think we've caught up quite yeah. fast. Yeah, we're going fast. Wellesley also has a municipal 
a lot like plants. plants. So they yeah. they yeah. have yeah. a different yeah. they've yeah. had a government yeah. for but yeah. one of yeah. one of the things that the Wellesley Sustainability Coordinator was saying was they began this effort expecting that the state was going to impose emission building emissions reporting requirements. Mm -hmm. So they began working with the large users to sort of standardize and help them gather their data. Okay. Um, conceivably, and I'm, I'm making this up as I go, but we could take the largest users and need them. Um, the town already has, there's a mass energy insight, which gives us that data could see what children's hospital, what trip advisor, what other large users you know, are doing the MBTA. Um, the numbers in the roadmap, actually, we did a greenhouse gas inventory based off of the uh, mass um, MAPC. Um, I can't remember what it's a plan area metropolitan area, area planning council. Yeah. They had a statistical pulling in data from various models, so it's mm -hmm. about as good as it. Yeah. You know, it's junior high school science, uh, <laughs> but it's got some numbers, and presumably in in five years, mm -hmm. the numbers will be keeping track. You know, in terms of the emissions. So uh, a lot of these these ideas are in our action plan and. The Burgo, for example, is in our action plan. This is something that we decided that we would look at this year mm -hmm. um, to evaluate for, for going forward. Or in this case, maybe the Climate Action Committee will do that. Um, I'm going to propose that unless we have additional topics, that we take a motion to adjourn for those who sure. want to get out of here. Send another one. Oh, we do need to do that, don't we? Because um, we did not schedule April yet. We did not. <laughs> All right, so if we go out till April 18th, how does that look for people? That's the school vacation week. Um, it is? Yes. I don't know how many people it impacts, but I would not be around that day. You will not be around that day, okay. Um, 25th is the week before Um town meeting so is that going to really crunch you down oh is it two weeks okay yeah yeah i'm not available that day but kevin is the well the 25th thursday the 25th of thursday turns out there's like this whole meeting no it's not gonna happen on the 25th of april that's right yeah mm -hmm. um all right how about the well family competition for great yeah, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see the the home on that one. Does it have to be finished? I don't think it has to. We could try Wednesday the twenty fourth, or Tuesday the twenty third. Wednesday works. No, I have a PBBC meeting on Wednesday. Yeah, Tuesday. You have a slipper. I have a slipper meeting on our calendar but I probably don't know that yet so it may have been well that would be a regular meeting for us right one two yeah. three four yeah. that would be a regular meeting I don't have it on mm -hmm. oh you will be the chair so you <laughs> get it I just assumed I didn't want to assume I was to be elected <laughs> that's <laughs> well that does feel a little jinxy do we want to revisit the the 18th and uh, Kevin you would be probably the other person school school Vacation week is that is that bad for you? Yeah, that should work. I mean, the twenty fourth, I could always do the minutes. I could just do it from the recording. Well, we like you. Gabby, we like you. Okay, yeah. I can help. So, yeah. Okay. So twenty so. fourth. Okay, going once, going yeah. twice, yeah. six o'clock. And do you have any uh, cash? You could follow up with a, a room, right? Yeah, I might only be able to be here for an hour, but I am probably the least important person in this room right now. So please go. <laughs> You've already told us you're le you already told us you're leading us, and, and with the little cackle when you said it. <laughs> <laughs> it would not be joining on the new committee, though. No. <laughs> and that was at six o'clock. Six o'clock, six to eight on the twenty fourth. Okay. All right. I think that is our last. Mm -hmm. and, and I will not be there. You will not be there. Yeah. But we will have a quorum. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll have everybody so, else. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So uh, I need a motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Uh, we need roll call vote. Yeah, I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, here a second. A second. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's we'll start online. Fred. Uh, aye. All right. Rachel. Aye. Nick. Aye. Maria. Aye. Paul. Aye. Kevin. Yes. Cameron. Aye. Me, right? Yeah. <laughs> in, the, in the chair, both tied. So we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye, everyone. It was very exciting. Very, very exciting right. update today, Gabby. Yes. Thanks. And you never, you never need to apologize for a long list of items. No. Not for anybody, but it's a long